Actually, you guys uh, played every other day throughout March. This is the first sort of two days between games since uh, in more than a month. So where do you sort of feel like everyone is at uh, collectively, physically, aside from some of the injuries that guys like Jamal have been getting back from? Well, yeah, to your point, I think really a well-timed break. It had been a month before we had more than one day in between games. And um, we've been playing at a very high level, but anytime you can give a guys a, a blackout day, which was uh, two days ago, or yesterday rather, and then come in for a light practice, clean st uh, some stuff up before you get on that plane and fly to Utah, that's a good thing. You know, uh, guys are tired mentally, physically, emotionally, and so I think we took advantage of the break. Uh, but overall, I would say I think we're in a good place with four games to go. Obviously, a lot of guys dealing with their various bumps and bruises, which I think is par for the course for all teams this time of the year. But uh, I think our guys are excited to get on that plane, go to Utah. And, you know, I knew that we had struggled in Salt Lake City. I knew that it had been a, uh, uh, a tough place to win. And uh, when I got in this morning, I asked Andrew Munson, I said, Munson, what, what is our record in Utah? And uh, he goes, well, we've lost six in a row. I said, yeah, I knew it wasn't very good. And he goes, but, and I said, oh, there's a but to this. <laughs> he goes, we're one in 14 since you got here. And it's one. Oh, yeah. It's so, and uh, I met with Nicole. I met with a bunch of our guys this morning. And I said, Nicole, how many, how many games do you think we've won in Utah? He said, like, maybe three. I said, I wish it was three. It's just, <laughs> and then the one game was our magnificent seven game. So um, four to go. Let's go, out, let's go to Salt Lake and, and try to get a win, a place that's been a very tough place for us to get wins, and uh, it'll be an important one. Is there any way to explain like, when there's something like that that goes over the course of, like, completely different iterations of their team and of your team? Like, like it, it's just kind of an oddity, I guess. I, is it? I, I, I think it's jet lag. That's a really long flight, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I think we have a hard time. Uh, and we don't really acclimate to the, the altitude very well. Yeah. We're not used to that. I, I think, to your point, 1-14 in 14 is, um, I can't put my, my finger on that one. They were really good for many years, obviously. You know, you had the Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert teams. So that's part of it. Uh, I mean, we've had some wars with that team. And then, you know, it's just uh, they have a great home court. The crowd is terrific, like ours is. So, um, but 1 of 14, I would not have, uh, not have guessed that one. Not for sure you're going to say the nightlife, but um, in Utah. Well, play a factor. well, I don't know. It always gets me. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, meeting with Nicola, can you just, and a couple other players, what was kind of your mindset behind that, and, and what was the purpose of, of getting together and maybe talking one-on-one? -on -one? Those guys. Well, I think, you know, communicating is always, you know, a positive, you know, it's just, you know, uh, we're playing at a high level, I think 18 and five since the break, uh, four games to go, where are you at mentally, where are you at physically, and making sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what are our, our approaches going into these last four. And uh, that was my probably most important message to our group today was everybody's talking about Wednesday night. I don't care about Wednesday night. Because if we don't handle our business tomorrow night, that takes away from the importance of Wednesday. Um, so I, I want to really focus on the task at hand, which is playing Utah. And people will say, well, they're not playing their guys. I, that's even scarier at times. Because you got a guy like Johnny Juzang who gets 27 points last night. Um, so we just have to handle our business tomorrow night. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page with that. If you're healthy and you're available, let's go to Utah. Let's get a win. And then we can worry about Minnesota after that. And, and I think our guys all understand that and, and are on board with that. Coach, when you talk about that, how the bumps and bruises versus you know, real injuries, do you maybe push it a little more in, these, in this final stretch, knowing that you've got the week off with the play and stuff? Mm -hmm. I think if a guy is able to play, he's going to play. And obviously Aaron Gordon I missed last game. We finally got Jamal and Zeke back, which is great. Um, you know, but it's not about like, if we were looking to rest guys, which is a dirty word, you know, guys wouldn't be playing right now, and we wouldn't worry about our seed. Um, but our guys are able to play with their respective injuries. But if it's something where Jamal or Nicola or Aaron or Michael or Pope or whoever else, if they have a real injury where they can't play, then we'll obviously rest them uh, to get their injury better, not to rest them because we're just not taking these games seriously. And that's not what we're doing. We still have a chance to be the number one seed. If we can get that, we want that. You know, but um, we'll also be smart about uh, player health and player availability, not just for these games, but once again going into round one. Are all those guys on the trip then? I believe so. Yeah, I think everybody uh, is good to go for this road trip, and uh, hopefully they're all available to play tomorrow night.
Nicola is in line for potentially winning third MVP. Just what has he meant to the team this season specifically? Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't know if I can put that into words. Um, you know, what does greatness mean to every team? And obviously, to your point, um, I think he has a good chance, hopefully, of winning his third MVP. And the best part about it, that's not his motivation. Uh, when he gets up in the morning and comes to the arena, he's not doing it for the individual accolades and recognition. He's doing it for the collective to win and hopefully win another championship because that's what he is all about. Um, but obviously, you know, we wouldn't have 54 wins, which is more than we had last year, with four to go if it wasn't for his greatness and efficiency and his effect every single night. And as you know, Ryan, because you're in every press conference, that is what I marvel at most importantly with Nicole, the player, is just the consistent greatness and how he finds ways to every single night, no matter who's available around him, to bring that level of excellence every night and uh, you know, basically put that team on his back and make each and every one of his teammates that much better. Well, because it's a night where NBA steps aside for college basketball, do you guys organize some sort of watch party or encourage you guys to watch it together as a team we all, when you get to Utah? Can you do that? I think... Um, Sometimes the players like doing that on their own. Um, so I, I know we have as a coaching staff, we have a uh, getting all the coaches together. We'll go out, have a private room at a restaurant, watch the game, break some bread, and I'm sure the players will do the same. Um, they go to the same spot in Utah most times. And um, but yeah, I, I think it's always important. You know, uh, Ryan Bowen, who is amongst other things our DJ at times, he played two songs before practice today. He played Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, well timed, and then he played the one shining moment. And I think the only guys in the gym who really appreciated that were Christian Brown, Braxton Key, Jay Huff. I think were the only. Are they the only Leslie. three? Leslie. And Colin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we had some good music before uh, before practice today. But yeah, those guys will all get together. We do, even if we don't organize it, a very close group that spends a lot of time together, which is always a positive. Coach, as it's kind of accolades and campaigning season here, I'm just curious what you thought of Contagious Caldwell Pope's defense all season long. Well, we call them first team for a reason. And uh, I think uh, there are numbers that have to back it up, but his approach every night, his discipline, his urgency, the pride he takes in his defense, and we challenge him every night to go out and guard all NBA players. And he does it with, with no uh, complaints, and uh, he does it at a very high level. And uh, we all understand how effective he is, but I really hope that the national audience and people around the NBA recognize his impact on that end. One of the best two-way players, I always laugh, like before the season, that somebody will rank the top 22 guards in the NBA. I don't even think Pope was on that list. And, and I, we just won a championship with KCP as our starting two, and the guy is just a, a, a terror on defense, and he seems to make every open shot. So uh, we love him. We hope that everybody else gives him the recognition that he deserves. Uh, but if not, you know, we'll, we'll continue to give him uh, a lot of DPOG chains and a lot of first-team love. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody.